Hello everyone, Stephen here, Fanatic Perspective. Uh, first off, I uh, just want to wish everyone a happy Memorial Day. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is obviously a time to remember the uh, men and women of all branches of the military who have uh, lost their lives serving this country uh, in, in many different aspects, in many different respects. Um, my biological grandfather uh, on my mother's side lost his life uh, serving our country uh, in Vietnam. Uh, I don't even think he was 20 years old. My mom never uh, got to know him, uh, but obviously it's something that impacted uh, you know, the lineage of our, our family uh, as my mom was later adopted and whatnot. So just want, again, thank you to everyone, um, you know, even living active. I know we have Veterans Day for that, but um, everyone in our military, you know, they, they allow us to be free, uh, have the freedom to make this channel, share my opinions and my thoughts, um, and, and, you know, hopefully be free thinkers in this country. And it's, you know, much of that starts with uh, the men and women of our military. Um, this is going to be a, a more on a serious note. Um, we had a ruling last weekend. Sorry, I've been, you know, under the weather, had some health challenges, but hopefully getting back uh, to my normal self. Uh, last week, the uh, NFL, you know, implemented or the owners announced the national anthem policy. And I wanted to get my thoughts on that policy being, uh, you know, if, if you don't, if, if you're going to uh, protest the flag or, or the anthem in any way, uh, you're encouraged to stay in the locker room. Uh, if you come out on the field, you're expected to stand um, and respect the anthem and the flag. And any interpretation of disrespect, uh, you know, you may be subject to fines. And uh, it's obviously been a very, very controversial. This whole, this whole thing since Colin Kaepernick uh, first sat and then was later encouraged by Nate Boyer to take I think we often forget that. Encouraged by Nate Boyer, who was a Green Beret. Uh, to take a knee out of respect. Um, this whole thing has, has you know, been a very divisive issue, a very divisive topic. Um, and to me, it's very simple what the league is doing. It comes down to one thing when it went, as it relates to the owners as well as the players. And it's the bottom line. It's about money, guys. It's not about the owners being, you know, having this, Patri they're not more patriotic than you and me. They're not more patriotic than the players. They don't care about America or love America any more or less than the players. What I'm saying is they care about ratings, which affects their bottom line. And it's very clear that after the ratings hit the NFL took with all the controversy going on, fueled by President Trump's comments, um, they were very afraid of, uh, you know, losing more money, losing rating share. Uh, they have contracts with a lot of these TV networks and anything that these players do uh, influences that. So as business owners and as owners of the league of their league and their 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 brand and their business, they're doing what's best to keep their the, the, the their main base of customers happy and, and, and what we're seeing is a big part of that base is is you know, more of a conservative, uh, you know, middle America, um, predominantly white. And they want to appease to that. And to me, I don't have an issue with that when you're looking at it from a business perspective. Um, I just, I just want to, it's just funny that they phrase it as they want to be patriotic and whatnot, but they started doing business with the military in 2009 because they, based on analytics and, and, social media and all the things that they they follow that's how they gauge you know where the bulk of their dollars and their their interest is coming from so it's actually pretty smart um but where they're trying to fool people is this false notion of patriotism and um you know and and, and, and promotion of that uh like when, when in reality like i said it's about the the dollar and the bottom line of, of, of what they're what they're the product that they're trying to produce. Um, I mean, and, and, and to me, it's how far do you want to take it? You know, if, if you're that patriotic and I, ch I challenge all of the fans, um, even those of you who are, who are on the more conservative leaning side and, and 
um, agree with these policies and agree with the restrictions that are levied upon these players now to, to acquiesce to the, the rules of the league, how far do you want to take this? I mean, if, if, if everyone's so patriotic and, and we're so gung-ho about the flag and the national anthem, uh, then it shouldn't be televised, to be honest with you. Everyone should be standing, including the cameraman, um, including those people at the concession stand, people going to the bathroom. You know, how far do we want to take this? Are we only holding the players on the field accountable? Or are we going to hold everyone present in the stadium accountable um, because, you know, of how, the, how sacred the anthem is and the flag and paying respect. So, it, 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 again, how far do you want to take it? Where it comes down to the money for the players is this players union has been exposed and the owners recognize and they, excuse me, and they know how weak the players union is. If you notice, there was no, they didn't consult any players. There was no player, player representation when they made these decisions or when they were uh, in the room brainstorming about what to do um, because they know that the players are going to follow along. They know that their union is not as strong as Major League Baseball or the NBA um, where players are legitimately going to go on strike over their rights. Why? Uh, as I talked to my boy, we text back and forth in our group chat, it's too many mouths to feed. Um, you know, they, under, they understand that so many players in the NFL live paycheck to paycheck. So what can they do? And they understand that their union um, – who I've been, quite frankly, I've been disgusted by the, the lack of, um, you know, engagement, involvement. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I just don't see enough uh, from this players union um, to, to stick up for themselves. And if the players want to have these rights and they want uh, to, to be able to express themselves, um, they should be able to threaten uh, with, with not playing. Uh, but they can't do that because their union, um, you know, there, there should be some sort of uh, contingency plan um, in place to where everyone pays out of their paychecks to um, supplement those players. Because I understand there's there's special teams guys, there's undrafted guys, there's late round draft pick guys who have not established themselves um, and don't have the money to be able to set out a season or whatever. Um, but there should be some sort of pot by a strong union to take care of those in need while the other players who can take care of themselves um, should be able to, to hold off for a little bit. You know, the NBA and, and part of it, the other, the other thing too is that NFL is in a weird place because other sports like basketball and even baseball to some degree, you can go play other places, you know, um, whether overseas or WBC, um, what have you football, you know, there's only one real medium here. Um, and, you know, when you look at the league and it's, you know, I, I believe over 70 percent uh, black players, you know, the other thing you look at is there's no black owners. There's no ownership. And to me, one of the things I've always um, hold, held important in this whole thing is just the lack of black ownership. To me, that's where the focus needs to be. Um, how do we. You know, when, and, and I understand that this is this is their league and their club, and they can set the rules how they want to. And, and I think all folks have to understand that. But at the same token, um, us as black folks have to be ownership minded, ownership driven, um, in my opinion. And whether that's putting together a collective group uh, to to put together a strong offer, and then. Really, really putting this league on its heels, you know, because if, if we have a, a collective group that's able to legitimately purchase a team and influence, um, you know, how things are in the ownership meetings and, and whatnot. And that's why I go back to the bottom line and, and the money aspect, because if they weren't losing ratings, they wouldn't care. They wouldn't. If, 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 if they gain ratings off of it, um, they would have, you know, a... Uh, uh, t-shirts and whatnot similar to the NBA like I can't breathe they would they would encourage it the league is is it's a flavor of the month type of thing I mean look no further than the breast cancer awareness um when that was hot everybody was wearing pink for a month that's died down um partially due to the domestic violence issues you know the Ray Rice thing happens but, and this is this is what I'm talking about and the hypocrisy they didn't they they, they suspend the guy for what was it two games then the, the social media backlash and everybody's threatening to boycott the NFL. Next thing you know, he's kicked out. Next thing you know, any whiff of anybody else involved in domestic violence allegations, whether it's Ezekiel Elliott, you just recently saw how Ruben Foster was treated on the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, they were ready to excommunicate Ezekiel Elliott from the, from the league, and he was never even charged. 
So I say all that to, I mean, you even look at the, the Washington Redskins, for example. The only reason why they haven't changed the name is because there hasn't been enough pressure on them from a rating standpoint. No one's affected their dollars enough for them to initiate a change. If, 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 if there was enough pressure and people really started boycotting their games and not going to FedEx Field, they would have been changing the name. So it's just, it's all about uh, the money. Now, from a, from a social issue, because I do want to chime in just with, you know, my personal opinion, um, it, it, my frustration comes because this, this protest, uh, peaceful protest, in my opinion, started in a good place to, to address uh, police brutality and certain inequality, inequalities that were happening in our country. Um, and, and it's, it, it was, you know, basically kidnapped and, and turned into a national anthem flag argument when, um, those who were involved, those who are in the know, know that it was never about that. Um, and, and personally as, as a black man, I've had, you know, I've had a unique experience, you know, my, my mother, like I said, her, her, um, her biological father was was murdered or not well yeah killed in in, in Vietnam, and my father um, was <clears throat> came to this country as a foreign exchange student in the in the early 1980s, ended up in Stillwater, Oklahoma, going to Oklahoma State. Um, basically, was you know the prototypical American dream. Came to this country, um, you know, really mastered his English. Um, you know, married my mother became a U.S. citizen, ultimately became a lawyer. He's in his 20th year uh, practicing law in, in the state of New York. Um, and he's, you know, been relatively successful since he's been in this country almost 40 years. Um, and so I, I was raised from, from, from that perspective of, you know, America was where he wanted to be. America was a land of opportunity uh, that he fought uh, to come from his country to be here, um, and, and that that that's very important. And you know, I do remember uh, probably as eight, nine, maybe ten years old. Um, you know, my father and I we were we were visiting a church for a time, and um, there was a little church retreat that you know, kind of a youth group type of thing. And we were going to uh, the I think it was the National Zoo. My my dad, you know, we were lost, and he made a uh, bad turn or whatever, and we were pulled over, and I'll never ever forget this. I was in the back seat, and I remember the police officer who pulled over my father, uh, accosting him and, and and basically mocking him over his accent, um, and and acting as though he couldn't speak English. This is again, this is my father, who's you know graduated from law school, passed the bar, um, one of the smartest people I know, and being talked down upon. I remember how weak he felt in that moment. I remember feeling him feeling powerless and me feeling that. I mean, the mask and the energy in the car, you can feel that even, even as a young kid. And I'll never forget that moment. Um, I'll never forget that interaction. Fast forward 10 years later, um, I'm a young college student. Um, walking down the street, coming back from visiting friends, um, evening time, walking back from the metro station, and uh, police drives up on the curb, gets out, um, and accuses me of, of stealing a bicycle, a bicycle that I did not have. I was on foot. Um, and I was, you know, my skull was pressed against the, the pavement. I was handcuffed. And if it wasn't for me having my, my school ID on my, my person, who knows what, have, what would have happened to me that night. But the language that was used uh, towards me, the, the, um, my ability not to, to even speak or explain myself and just... Uh, you know, guilty because of how I look or because I fit the description, so to speak, uh, was very challenging. And I've had excellent interaction with police. I, I grew up, um, one of my first, you know, role models was a police officer in fifth grade, my dare teacher, uh, Officer Stevens. I'll never forget him. Uh, he loved Lucky Charms. And um, I remember always feeling, a, a, you know, this sense of security by police, you know, enforcers and not enforce but protectors of our community and again this is this is a this is an issue of police brutality not an issue against the police per se okay i am pro-police i've had great interactions with the police i've called the police uh just last week 
um, for for a domestic situation that was happening in our apartment complex. I had great interaction with Dawson PD, and I thank them for handling in and following up and, and helping to uh, diagnose the situation. But at the same token, we have some bad apples out there, and that's what these players are standing to protest because many of them as black men have felt the same mistreatment that I have experienced, um, and many others, countless. Um, and, and that, and, and again, I have, I, you know, my wife's side of the family, we have family members who are police officers. I have family members on my side who are police officers. I have friends who were lieutenants, detectives, all sorts of, um, you know, even in the, in the military. My, my father, uh, you know, worked hard, saved up money, and brought all of his brothers and sisters um, from Africa to this country, one of which uh, served in Desert Storm and is, and is still in the military to this day as a doctor now. Um, so this, this, this narrative that we have to be dismissive and, and, uh, and so defensive all the time, you know, it's, it's disheartening to, to watch. And, and I know this is getting lengthy, but it's just we're so focused on being right and we're so focused on winning a debate instead of focus on loving and listening. And I think if we focus more on loving and listening and not, you know, if you look at this, especially this national anthem policy, one of the first things that you saw from even people like the vice president and, and, and so many other politicians was we won. You know, like there was a battle, like, you know, this is, this is something where, you know, people are, people are dying in the streets, um, you know, because of misunderstandings, because of um, lack of understanding of culture. And until that's addressed, and, and not to mention, we focus so hard on the people who boycotted the NFL, and that's what affected their bottom line because they felt the players were disrespecting the flag. But what about the, 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 the high number of people who boycotted the NFL because Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a job? Or the, the increasing number of people who will boycott the NFL because now Eric Reed is being blackballed out the league? Um, and, and some others who have um, taken action. You know, where does this conversation go? Um, I encourage you guys to listen to Sam Macho's comments. Uh, he's a linebacker of the Chicago Bears. He, he had a uh, excellent press conference the other day, I, I think at, after practice at, at their OTAs, and uh, just sharing his thoughts on the national anthem policy. And I thought it was very, very insightful, um, you know, and extremely informative from a player's perspective. So I'll probably post that link here in, in the description. But um, instead of trying to bait and, 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 you know, prove you're right all the time, Listen from a standpoint of empathy, just like I listen to people who tell me that um, they don't like what the NFL players are doing because they, they lost a family member and they know how they feel when they listen to the national anthem. I'm very sensitive to that. I'm very, very sensitive to that. And I understand that I don't hold uh, if they agree with the policies or they agree with those things against them. Again, I try to operate from a position of love and understanding because I want this world to be a better place. Um, so, I mean, those are just, those are just my thoughts, uh, from a business standpoint, just remember it's about the money. If there's anything American about this decision, it's, it's about capitalism and responding to, responding to your consumers. Uh, but from a, you know, bigger picture standpoint, uh, listen to one another, gather perspective from one another, talk to people who are not like yourself, talk to people who are a different race from yourself. Uh, you'll be surprised with what you hear and it goes you know on both ends in my opinion uh, but that's just my two cents um, I look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments about your thoughts on the policy um, you know your thoughts on how the owners are handling it how the players are responding uh, if you think the players union needs to step up what have you I love to um, engage in a, in a you know proper civil discourse but um, you know if we get into I don't want to get into banter and, and trolling and any of that nonsense and you know, that stuff will not be tolerated uh, on this channel. It's not Twitter. So, you know, I just, again, want to have a, have a real discussion. So appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll be back with some more content, some exciting stuff to come for the channel. Um, please like, share, subscribe. And uh, again, happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all the women, men and women that we've lost uh, serving this country. Uh, your sacrifices will never be forgotten. Thank you.